Underdogs have won three of the last four main events. Overall this year, underdogs have been thriving under the bright lights. Can Michelle Pajeda defy the odds, win as a dog, and get his fourth win at middleweight? My name is Angelo. This is We Want Picks, and I'm going to give you my bets for UFC Vegas 99. Before I dive into this card, let's take a look at last card. UFC Vegas 98 was very successful for both myself and Jakey Boy. Almost five units of net profit, a 41% return on your investment. I absolutely smoked that card, and I was all over Brandon Royval in the main event. And spoiler, I think the underdog wins this main event as well. But it wasn't just last week that was a good card. The last seven weeks, I have smoked. And we're not going to win every single week. That's not possible. But what we have been doing is dominating more weeks than we're down. And the last seven weeks, I was only down one single card, and that was UFC Paris. The other six cards were up some nice money, almost eight units of net profit over the last seven events, a 29% return on investment. And that ROI number, that return on the investment number, that's borderline the most important number in all of this. You can unlock all the picks, the bets, the tools, and everything else for this card, UFC Vegas 99, right now. Just go to wewantpicks.com, click become a member. It's freaking $10. This is the last seven events. If you spent $20, because this is two months worth of events, this is the results you would have gotten. WeWantPicks.com, click become a member at the top. You're going to unlock tools like the data analyzer, the prop hunter, the line movement tracker. You're going to get bets and everything else. And it's for four cards because it's an entire month. And this next month is solid. You're going to get this card, UFC Vegas 99. You're going to get UFC 308. You're going to get UFC Edmonton with the return of Amir Albazi and UFC Vegas 100. Don't be a cheap bastard. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. Before we break down the bets, I am going to give you my bets. Before we break that down, let's take a look at some favorites and dogs. And you'll notice I've only got three dogs that I actually like here. I think this is a favorite heavy card. I don't think we're going to get a lot of underdogs here. We didn't get a lot of underdogs last week. But I do think we're going to get some. If we look at some favorites, I think Asu Almabayev smokes. I mean, I, it just the love for Matouch Nikolaou makes no sense. And the line's closing. Asu is getting more and more affordable as the week goes on, and I just don't get it. Matouch Nikolaou's probably going to get smoked here. Jake Hadley, he has a new opponent. He was an underdog versus Brady Highstand. Brady Highstand's gone. His new opponent is basically a UFC debut. Lost on the contender series, getting a short notice crack, and now here he is in his UFC debut. Decent striker, but he's a little too patient. He doesn't have much of a ground game, and I think Jake Hadley's going to be the better, faster, busier striker and the far better grappler. He is a little expensive at minus 450, but I think he gets it done. Robellus Despain, listen, he let a lot of people down in his last fight. A lot of people. He couldn't defend the takedowns, and when he was on the ground, he couldn't get back up. But that was against Waldo Cortez. Waldo Cortez is good, very good, and tough, and durable, and hits hard. He's athletic. Where his opponent, Austin Lane, yes, very athletic, former NFL player, doesn't have the chin to hang. And Robelis is set up to succeed here. They put him in this fight for a reason. He's a little older, but he's a six foot seven Olympic beast, and they want him to get wins. They want him to be the next big thing. So they're like, here's a huge guy that's chinny that you can knock out. So I think Robellus lives up to it and gets it done. And Kyler Phillips, listen, he's fighting an old, used up Rob Font. Rob Font was never dangerous, ever. He always just relied on clean boxing to get it done. But he never evolved. He can't defend takedowns. He doesn't pose any threat. So Kyler Phillips can just stay in his face, throw back, shoot takedowns, do what he wants to do. Kyler Phillips should absolutely get the win. If we're looking at some solid underdogs, I think Alice Hardeleen can win this fight. I think she won her last fight. A lot of people hate on that, but I think she won her last fight. The striking was about even. She got some takedowns, got some control time, was moving forward. And that was a short notice step up. She's fighting somebody coming off a two-year layoff and a bad knee injury. I think Alice Hardeleen can move forward, stay in Melissa Martinez's face, give her a hard time, back her up, score well with the judges, and squeak out a close win. Darren Elkins. You're going to say, well, he's not an underdog. He's minus 115. Well, he was an underdog this whole week, and he just flipped. And if you go to bet openly, he's still a dog there. Bet openly is not a sports book. It's peer-to-peer -peer betting. So if you're watching this and you're in a state that you don't have legal sports betting, it's okay. Bet openly is legal. 
because it's not you versus a casino. It's you versus another human being. There's another person on the other side of that bet. And if you win, you take their money. If they win, they take your money. Because of that, they can offer better odds. He is an underdog still at bet openly. I don't know how much longer that will last. But I think Darren Elkins gets it done. I have a bet on him. I'll show you that in a second. And Michelle Pahed in the main event. He's plus 115 right now. I got him at better odds. I, listen, he's bigger, stronger, faster, more athletic. more. Di- he's all the things. The only threat on the Anthony Hernandez side is he's got good grappling and he can be durable. That's it. So if he weathers a storm... Oh, Michelle's going to get tired. Anthony's going to take over. I mean, obviously, anything's possible. We watched Anthony Hernandez do that to Rodolfo Vieira years ago. But Michelle Bejera is dangerous. He's good. He's fast. He's athletic. He has cardio. He's been to a bunch of decisions. Just because recently at middleweight, he's beaten the shit out of people, doesn't mean he can't go to a decision. So the people picking and betting on Anthony Hernandez are relying solely on Anthony Hernandez to survive an ass-kicking and then hoping Michelle Bahada gets tired. I don't see that happening, and that's why I bet on him. Here's a look at my bets. This is not all the bets. This is being filmed on Thursday. There will be more bets placed. The safety parlay is always hidden. It hit last week at plus money. It hit the week before that. Hopefully, it hits again this week. Also, at plus money, you can unlock the rest of my bets at wewantpicks.com. Just click become a member. It's freaking $10. But let's look at what I got going on this week. Disclaimer, I only have 3.25 units going so far. I'll probably add some more. But for now, 3.25 units. And that's because I'm a normal human being who bets with real money. I've got a family. So I place my bets. I use my brain. I don't chase wild dogs for no reason. I don't throw 30 units on the board pretending that they're real. If you are watching people, your favorite Twitter guy, your favorite YouTube, if you're watching them and they're doing 20 units a week, it's one of two things. One, they're not real bets. They're not actually placing these bets. It's all bullshit. Or two, the units are too small. You should not be having three, four, five units on underdogs. If you do, your units are too small. A unit, one single unit is supposed to be the baseline. So when you say, I have a unit, for example, I parlayed Kyler Phillips and Robelis Dismain. I put one unit on that. I'm very confident. I'm fairly confident that's going to hit. For me to put more than one unit is like, this is a guarantee. And then if we look at the Darren Elkins bet, I put a quarter of a unit on that. Because I do think he wins. Every single bet I place, I think it hits. I don't just chase value. I know there's a strategy to that. Like, oh, it's plus 29,500. Let me just do I don't chase value. I, I find bets that I like, and if it's not a ripoff, I'll place the bet. Darren Elkins is a great example. I think he wins this fight. He's a grittier of the two. He's the more durable of the two. He has more ways to win this fight. But I only put a quarter of a unit on him because a lot of things can go against him. Coming back after a surgery, a year away, he's a little older. His opponent's dangerous early. So I do think he wins. I place the bet. A quarter of a unit on him. I have a parlay. I parlayed all three women fights. I just slapped the overs together. Edwards versus Vidal, Reed versus Panay, Arlene versus Martinez. I think they all go to a decision. But that's a three-leg parlay. All it takes is one fluke over a 45-minute period, and that bet misses. It's a plus-money bet. I put a half of a unit on it. And then I also have Michelle Pajeda in the main event. Half a unit plus 135. I do think he wins. I'm fairly confident he wins. I tend to bet less on underdogs than I do favorites. And if I was a man, and if I used my testicles, which I I am, I did have a vasectomy, so maybe some of my testosterone went with it, I would bet more, but I don't. I'm a conservative ange. I was all over Brandon Royval last week. I had three quarters of a unit on him in total. If I was a man and I put a unit, I would have made more money, but it is what it is. We're up consistently. Half a unit on Michelle Pajeda. Literally, I, I just don't, I don't see him losing this fight. Obviously, if he does some dumb shit, because he does do the capoeira fight and the flips, the spins, all the, the theatrics. If he does some dumb shit and he puts himself into a situation where he ended up on the ground, he could give up minutes. I don't see him getting submitted. He is also a good jujitsu guy. So I don't see him getting submitted. But he could. He could give up minutes. Things could not go his way if he gets a little too fancy and free. So I threw a half unit on him at plus 135. Here's a look at Jakey. Jakey boy has got a lot going on here. 
He could win. If all goes well, he could win over 20 units. The likelihood, obviously, isn't a guarantee. Nothing is. He's got two wild props. I know you guys love the big high payout props. He's got two big props, a couple of favorites, and his underdog lock of the week is Darren Elkins. All the reasons I mentioned, he agrees, which is why he put one and a half units on him. Gene Matsumoto, Jacob, I, Jacob might be related. To, they might be cousins. And not for looks. Gene's like handsome. He's not anemic. He isn't pale. Like they don't look like they're related. But certainly there's got to be something going on because Jacob is so confident in Gene. All week, Gene, 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 Gene. And he's a good fighter. I'm not nearly as confident as Jacob is, but Jacob's confident enough that he put three full units on Gene to win this fight. You can unlock all of his bets. He has 9.6 units total right now, and he's not done. He's actually going to Vegas. He will be there for these fights. If you want to unlock all of these bets, mine, his, everything else, the picks, the tools, everything, we want picks.com. Click become a member. It's freaking $10. $10, not a week, $10 a month. And we have proven to you through this video, week in and week out, that we are profitable. We want picks.com. Click become a member. If we take a look at Bet Openly, I talked about them earlier and their odds and what they offer. Well, they have the best odds in the game because they are not a sports book. It's peer-to-peer, human-to-human. And if you go to wewantpicks.com slash betopenly, or if you go to betopenly.com and you sign up, you can try to take my money. You can bet against the safety parlay. If anybody in the safety parlay loses, you win. You can bet against the lock of the week. If Daniel Pineda wins, you win. And not only do you win, you take Jacob's actual money. You take my actual money. Check them out. It's the best odds in the game. And that's because they are not a sports book. And finally, become a damn premium member. It's insane. Here's the four events you're going to get for ten, $2.50 for all of our picks, bets, and tools for UFC 308. $2.50 for this card. $2.50 for UFC Edmonton. $2.50 for UFC Vegas 100. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. And 50 bucks. You want 50, we send you 50. The demand here is crazy. So I am falling a little behind keeping up, but you will get your money, I promise. We want picks.com slash bets. You use any one of our affiliate links. You sign up with one of our sportsbook partners. You make a deposit and they send me money. I slice it off. I send you 50 bucks. We want picks.com slash bets. Good luck this weekend, guys. This feels like a card that is either super easy, straightforward, we're good, or it's all, everything's gonna fall apart. It seems like a, a weird card, which is why I'm going light. Good luck this weekend, UFC 308. Next week, I'm looking forward to that card.